What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new video. First of all, I want to thank all of you who's been watching my videos, subscribing. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, today we are kind of making a video I thought I'd never make a video I never wanted to make and that is uh, my engine blew up. So what happened was the N55 in my F10 535 um, spun its bearing, cylinder 3 and cylinder 6. This happened a year ago and to, in today's video I'm gonna talk to you guys about all everything that I went through, the process, how I found out, early indicators and what things you could do to maybe um, avoid the same thing happening to you. Alright, so a little background, how this happened. The car was running fine, everything was good. I was just running some errands that day and just doing some city driving. And I remember the car driving fine and I wasn't even beating on anything. I was just driving it, going, minding my own business. And then I had to take a ride. I had to actually turn in into a parking lot because I was trying to get some chicken wings. And the second I turned in, um, the car kind of shut off. Honestly, it kind of freaked me out, but I didn't really think anything of it at the moment. So I just turned the car back on and the car started up just fine. I went ahead and got my wings. Now I get in the car, start it again. On the way back, I kind of hear a faint knocking, right? From 2500 RPM to 3500. So at this point, I'm really freaking out. First guess, I thought it was my transmission. So the transmission went out or something went bad. And you know, naturally, I started freaking out and I know what to do. So the whole entire day, I just spent stressing out, posting it on Facebook forums. And yeah, that's how my first day went. Slowly time went on, I started doing more research, I looked up videos of rod knocks because I had a suspicious, as you guys already know, N people say that N55 is prone to rod bearing issues, it happened to me, but um, I kind of had this in the back of my head, so I was like, alright, let me look up how a rod knock sounds, and I did, and guess what, it sounded exactly like how my engine was sounding from 2500 to 35 RPM and I instantly kind of knew that my rod rings went out. I'm gonna go into what I feel like happened which made the rod bearings fail at 94,000 miles. A little fact you guys need to know before I get into the story is that uh, my car was covered by warranty. What company I'm gonna disclose at the end but for now, you just gotta know that my car was covered by warranty. So, as soon as I kind of figured out that, oh, all right, so it's the rod bearings, I might need a rebuild or I might need a new engine, use engine, blah, 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 whatever. So first thing I did um, after I kind of figured out that the bearings went out is I went to BMW warranty. So once I got there, they're like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, we also think it's the rod bearings, we hear the knocking blah 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 and they're like all right so for you for you to use your warranty you're gonna have to authorize a tear down which is $2,500 and once we are in there if your warranty feels like they want to cover it they're gonna cover it if they don't feel like they're not gonna cover it they're not right so I'm like all right so what is the first thing they're, they're gonna ask for which was oil change receipts right from zero mileage um, which for a lot of people, this might be hard to get, but luckily in my case, the past owner actually had record of everything. And this is when the first problem came out, right? After I went through all the records, I kind of realized that the last owner was doing 15,000 mile oil changes, right? Well, can you blame him? I don't know. BMW does. Did recommend 15,000 oil changes when the F10 first came out. Then they later changed it to 10,000. But even at 10,000, I feel like that's too high, right? It should be 5,000. Every 5,000, you need to change your oil. So that brings us to our first why, right? And probably maybe the biggest why is the past owner was doing 15,000 mile oil change intervals, which probably caused a lot of premature wear to the bearings. Hence, it failed on me, right? At 94,000 miles. So another reason I think could be a factor is the fact that I took the car to the canyons like every month and I would go around corners relatively quick and what happens is this makes your oil splash 
to one side of um, the engine and the oil pump is not able to pick up oil which leads to oil starvation right so maybe that was a factor which played a part but I highly doubt it a lot of people take the BNLs to the mountains and I just feel like it all came down to the past owner not doing the oil changes all right so early indicators um, early indicators I think the biggest indicator was it was burning a lot of oil right before the bearings gave out right so uh, I remember doing an oil change and I needed a quart of oil at around eight to nine hundred miles which is not usual at all usually around four thousand miles I need a quart of oil but that oil change I needed oil like a quart right after 800 miles which was super suspicious I didn't really think anything of it so I just put the oil and went on with my life right but that was one of the biggest early indicators so if you face anything like that I would definitely open up the oil filler housing to see if there's any glitter or any sign of metal there if so you you, you better act on it real quick all right, so now let's get into the main part of the video, which is how much it cost me to fix my car. Because the good news is my car's been okay. It's been fixed for five months now. Um, it has a brand new engine in it from BMW, two years of warranty. And let me tell you guys, it cost an absurd amount of money. Like a lot of people are not gonna believe it, but I have receipts which I might include in the video but it cost a whopping $18,000 to fix this car. Yes, $18,000, you heard me right. Which is way more than a used F10. So like I said, I had warranty. After I collected all the oil change receipts, I submitted everything, bit the bullet, and I'm like, all right, let's do the tear down, see what happens. So once they took down the oil pan, the suffering, the oil pan, they found out the rod bearings went out. So warranty company was being kind of sketchy. The first thing they recommended was a bottom end repair, rebuild. Um, BMW straight up said no. I was super happy. I was like, yeah, I don't want that. But um, I, I feel like if that's a route you take, it's completely fine. So yeah, but it's something I didn't want to go through because since I had warranty, I wanted the best out of it, right? So moving on, then they tried to give me a used engine from LKQ, right? I said no. I told them I don't want it, that there's no way it's happening and I want a new engine. I w so basically I s put my foot down and I told them I want a new engine, right? The service was paid for, so now you guys have to hold up your end of the deal and get me an engine. So a whole bunch of other problems arise, first being BMW wanted $22,000 for the job which included labor, fluids and a new long block, right? Crazy. I was like, hell no. Another issue that arise is your warranty will only cover how much your car is worth in the current market, right? So for COVID and the crazy used car market, they valued my car at 16500 which means that I need to pay 6000 out of pocket for the long block. At this point, I'm like, all right, you know what? This is crazy. I told BMW, look, if you guys can bring down the price for me, I'm gonna go ahead and authorize the work. If not, I'll just go with the used engine, you know? Let's get it over with. Maybe I can sell the car right after. Um, so after I did that, they kind of backed off on the pricing and they're like, you know what? We're gonna give you a special deal, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the just cliche dealership talk. And the final number they kind of gave me was 18,500. And even then I was like, all right, no, that's too much. Um, the max I want to pay out of pocket is $1,000, which didn't happen. So at the end of everything, um, I did get a long block. The total for the long block was $18,500. Uh, warranty covers $16,500, rest came out of my pocket. So yeah, guys, that's the story about my F10 and why it's been absent for a year now. So what's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen is the, the, the reason I'm not driving it is because it's not registered right now and my cycle is gonna be next month which means the F10 is gonna be back on the road. So yeah, new engine. I am gonna be keeping the car, modding it, tuning it and everything, all that good stuff. 
But yeah guys, um, thank you for watching this video. If you guys like what you see and want to follow along with the journey, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I think you guys already know, but I do have a Z32, which I drive a lot now. It's a manual 3.0 and the F10 is going to be out soon. But anyways guys, thank you for watching and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.